Hello and welcome to It's About Time. My name is Dennis Henson and I appreciate you joining us here today. Today we're going to talk about a project management system. Business is a lot like solving the Rubik's Cube. Has anyone ever tried to solve a Rubik's Cube without the instructions? Have you ever tried it? Yeah. You know, it's very difficult. In fact, uh, without instructions, I think it would probably, if ever, take me two or three weeks to actually get one completed. With the instructions, probably two or three days. But if I want the Rubik's Cube solved, I can have it done in no time. If, if I had to get it solved, I could probably have it done in an hour or maybe two or maybe even less. How would I do that? I used to peel the stickers off. Well, the, you could cheat. Yeah, that cheating, yeah, yeah, well. cheating is one. I agree, that's one way. What's another way? Yes. You would find someone that that's knows the, how to solve exactly. You just bring in someone that knows how to do, do the, the, the Rubik Cube. And in, in a couple of seconds, they go click, 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 and it's done. Okay? Well, that's a, that's a good example of how business works. You can't do everything. In fact, most of the things, there's someone else out there that can do them better and faster and cheaper than you. So the first thing you need to do is decide, what is my time worth? Is my time worth $50 an hour, $75 an hour? If you're, if you're a real estate investor, you probably are talking about thousands of dollars an hour. And in some cases, tens of thousands. So couldn't you afford someone that charges $20 or 15 or 30? Of course you could. And if you're not taking advantage of that, you are wasting time. You're overcharging yourself. Exactly. You're overpaying yourself. <laughs> so next time you have this problem that seems insurmountable, you don't have enough time, just think about it. There's people out there that can do this really fast and better and cheaper than you can. But you need to be able to manage everything that comes through. Your mind is like a computer, and it's the most powerful computer in existence today. There's not a computer that's ever been invented that can do what the human mind can do. The human mind can think of several things at once. No computer can do that. They've never been able to. Now, computers can think of things hundreds and you know, thousands of seconds apart, but not simultaneously. Human brain is really powerful, and if you know how to use it, but there's not a, an operation system. If you buy a computer, it comes with a book operations manual. Here's how to use it, and it tells you how to take full advantage of it. But with the human brain, that book doesn't exist, but I'm about to tell you how it works. Here's how the human brain works. Here's the operation system. Ask. You ask your brain, who can I get to do this? Who can do this better than me? Where can I go to find this? Now, one of the places that I've gone for years and years, if I need to know somebody, top of my list is Roger. I pick the phone up and I say, Roger, do you know someone who can do this? And he always does. He knows everybody. I mean, he literally knows everybody. Well, if you know somebody like that, and you do, he's sitting right here. If you know someone like that, you can pick the phone up and say, who can I get to do this? There's a story that kind of goes along with this, where Steve Jobs was working on the design for the first iPhone. And he didn't like the plastic cover because it scratched so easily, and it didn't look very classy. So he thought, this needs to be glass. Who do I know? Now this is Steve Jobs, super successful Steve he says. Who do I know that could help me find a glass like this? And then he thought, well, I have a friend that's on the board of directors at Corning. He picked the phone up and he called him. And that person introduced him to the president of Corning. 
So he had a meeting with him and he said, this is what I need. And, and, he, and he, they told him, well, we don't have anything like that. But then he thought, but back in the 60s, we were developing a windshield for a Plymouth that had a super hard glass that just wouldn't break. It was so tough, we called it Gorilla Glass. Mm -hmm. And John said, well, let me see it. He looked at it and said, I love this. Over the next six months, I'll order all that Corning can make. Mm -hmm. So Corning started to backtrack and they said, well, well, you know, it would take a lot of engineering and a lot of resources. And he said, you didn't hear what I said. He said, I'll buy all that you could possibly make. In other words, the money is unlimited. So over the next six months, they devoted an entire facility to Gorilla Glass. And six months later, the iPhone cover that you're looking at right now was invented. And it all happened because Jobs knew how to use this. You ask yourself, how do I get this done? Then your brain does this wonderful thing. I don't know if you've ever tried this before, but right now you're, you're not thinking about any color. I'm sure you're not thinking about any color. But if I say, tell me some colors, what's some colors? Blue. Teal. No, whatever. Green. Keep going. Green. Magenta. Yeah, black, blue, green, Fuchsia. yellow, pink. I mean, Fuchsia. all of these just, when you ask your mind, it reaches out, where does this come from? I don't know. It's, it can't all be packed down in there. It's, it's in the universe. So when you ask your mind, things start coming into your mind. Now, whether you like it or not, things are coming into your mind all the time. If you have goals, your mind is programmed to look for those things. Have you ever bought a car and it had a unique color and you thought, boy, that's great. I am the only one in the world that has a car this color. And then before you get where you're going, you see 15 other cars because you're programmed to look at that color. If you have set your will to do these certain things, your mind is bringing the stuff into you faster than you can process it. So you have to have a system to process all of your thoughts. And that's how, that's what, how time management works. I call it the master list. So when you, when you think you need to capture, when you think, oh, I need to, I need to remember that phone number. I need to remember this guy's name. I need to remember to do this. Oh, I should have done that. When these things come into your mind, you have to have a system to capture it, and then you do it at the time that it makes the most sense. If you're just running around trying to do things whenever it comes to mind, you're not going to be very successful. You're just going to be running around not being productive. So with the master list, we're going to capture these things and place them to be done in, in different areas. And so it kind of looks like this. Master list, major projects, reference projects, daily list, team list, and everything goes from here into one of those slots. So what this system will do will let you capture your to-dos, want-tos, ideas, projects, references, and put them through a process to produce the most productive actions and a logical sequence for their completion. Now think of what I just said. Let me, let me say it again. That's really important. It's capturing everything. To-dos, want-tos, ideas, projects, references, and puts them through a process to produce the most productive actions at the most logical time. That's really powerful. So briefly, here's how it works. You have an idea, an action item, a project or a reference. You capture it, either writing it down. I like to capture it on my cell phone. I, for years, I carried a little recorder, but after I got the cell phone, I just use an app. <clears throat> Once you capture it, then you identify. Identifying it means, well, is this something I'm going to do, something someone else is going to do, something needs to be done next week, does it need to be done next month, does it need to be done today? Then you sort those things because you put a little prefix when you're identifying it. Prioritize so that the most important things are all that ever get worked on. 
Your mind can think of more things than you can possibly ever do. It'll, it'll drive you crazy. My wife tries to do them all. That's just the way she, her, her mind is set. But you can't do them all. So why not do the most important ones? So when you prioritize them, you know what that most important thing is. Like the getaway that we're going to. I've asked everybody that's coming to write down the 20 things they want most and then prioritize them. The only ones that really matter are the top ones. You, the others may, may happen or may not, but if you get the top ones done, then the next ones move up, and they're the top ones. Prioritize it and place it to be done at the most optimal time, and we're going to talk about how to do that. I hope. All right, there we go. Terms that you need to understand to make this work. Capturing means write it down, record it, put it in a place so that you can review it either the next day or, or that evening. Sorting means you put a prefix by the name, you put a, a prefix before it so that when you're, you can highlight it on your computer, hit the sort button, and all of a sudden everything a like kind is together. So if I'm, if I'm going to do something next week, I'll put a, an A byte. And when I sort it, all the A's come to the top. I can move those things to next week and not look at them again until next week. Did that save me a lot of time? What about this? If I put, um, if I put a, this is September, if I put an OCT on there and I sort it, and I think, well, all of these things, I don't have to look at them to until October. Did that save me time? I don't have to look at them again. I don't have to rethink it. I mean, it's not even going to be looked at until October. So once you put the codes on there, then you want to prioritize them. What is the most important? What is the least important? And by you can use the sort key again by putting a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, you know, and then hit the sort key and the ones come to the top. You're going to concentrate on them. You need to understand tasks. There's a difference in task and projects. What's the difference in a task and a project? Who knows? Project yep. is the overarching thing, and the tasks are the things under it to accomplish okay. the project. Right. A task is a single thing. Getting a haircut. Mm -hmm. Buying groceries. Um, getting gas. Those are just tasks. And they can fit in when you, when you need them. But now a project is, I just bought this new property. And now, you know, I've got a, a, a world of stuff to do. I've got to get contractors together, get the power, the water, and uh, get the insurance. I mean, there's a lot of things that come under that. But the great thing is, once you bought a property and you set those tasks, the next property has the same ones. So you save that time. You don't have to do it every time. You just say, new property list. And the wonderful thing about it is, when I have a new property, I just take the new property list and I put it on someone else's list. And I'm done. How long did that take? Not very long. When I, when I finish a property, I've probably spent an actual time spent on a property, maybe a minute, and I usually earn between thirty and sixty thousand dollars on that minute. That's pretty good return on investment, but it's a system that you set up. You have to set up a system. Like I have this wonderful drink that I send it out. It's called the Fountain of Youth drink, and it takes me twenty minutes every day to to put it together. So Roger told me that he and his wife were drinking. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And so I, I saw him yesterday. I said, well, Roger, how long did it take you to make the drink this morning? He said, 15 seconds. I, I said, is that the same drink? What's going on? How did, you, how did you do that? He said, well, I mixed all the ingredients up for a whole week, and then I just have to dip them out and pour them in, and it's done. I thought, duh, Genius. duh. <laughs> I'm the time management person here, not you. So he taught me, but you see, I captured that. I captured it, and I'm going to spend Saturday 
doing next week's drinks. So you learn from, from these things. So you need to set up your computer files with daily list, master list, delegate list, project list, reference file, and calendars. You need to have all of those files so that you can put things. Now, if you're doing this, if you're doing this in Excel, you don't have to have all those files. You can have one Excel file, and at the bottom, you can just have different pages, which is really easy. But I've been doing it in Word for 25 years, and I'm not changing. Another good part is I can write anything in one sentence, anything in one sentence, so I can prioritize it so it doesn't mess up and go to two or three sentences. You're brand new. You can't do that. But in Excel, you can. In Excel, it doesn't matter how many. I mean, your sentence can go on for an hour, and you can still sort it because it, it allows you to go uh, as far as you would like to. All right, so here's what it looks like. We covered that. Now, <clears throat> back before, before I wrote this program, I was the manager at a large facility. It was a national semiconductor facility. And I had 50 employees. We had clean rooms where everything had to be absolutely spotless. It was the most challenging facility of all of our uh, businesses. We had, you know, we did major businesses throughout the nation. We did General Motors, General Dynamics. We had most of the schools in, uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It was a large company. It was one of the, the Fortune 100 companies, Service Master, and their managers in the industrial, um, they all worked three shifts. Now, I'm talking about working three shifts, morning shift, evening shift, and night shift. That's all day. You know, you don't get any rest. And that's how the, that's how the service master managers existed. They were responsible for all three shifts, and they were on call 24 hours, seven days a week, and on holidays. I can remember one Christmas I got a call. I had to go in and, and put people to work because things had to be done at the facility to keep, it, to keep it operational. And they made it even harder by having ISO audits. Now, an ISO audit means this auditor is going to come in and find what's wrong with your business, and they're paid to find what's wrong with your business. Okay? So in my facility, I got, um, well, you, you got so many sick days a year. No, no service master manager took a sick day. You couldn't afford, you couldn't. You didn't have time. And then you got vacations. After five years, you got two weeks vacation, and then it went up to three. I had it accumulated up to five weeks vacation and had all my sick time. Okay, all of the other managers were not taking any of that. They couldn't. They couldn't leave their facility. All right, I went in at nine, and at 12, I was done. I took all of my sick days, and I went on all of my vacations. And when we had ISO audits, I had perfect score. After the, I think it was the fourth year, the auditor came in and said, we need to meet in your office. So we went into my office and he said, Dennis, I'm going to have to gig you this year. I said, why? There's nothing wrong. He said, they'll fire me. If I don't find something wrong with your facility, they'll fire me. So I went to the service master vice president and I said, I got this great time management system. Look what I'm doing. Why don't you let me teach everyone else? I can teach the other managers and it'll be great. And he said, that's a great idea. I said, but I want to make sure I know everything. So would you put me on an expense account so I can go see all of the time management classes and buy all the time management books and, uh, and get all the CDs? And he said, sure. Now, I don't know if you've ever been on an expense account before, that means you could go stay anywhere you want to, eat anything you want to eat, and drive anything you want to drive, and they pay for it. It was wonderful, so I didn't waste any time. I signed up for all of them. I went to all of them. And what did I find? They were a big waste of time. I mean, they really, <laughs> really were. Their time management system really didn't compare with mine. It didn't come close. 
But I did learn a couple of things. One of the things I learned was about how to fill up a foot tub. Do you know what a foot tub is? Does anybody know? Well, a foot tub is what people down south, it's a great big tub, and they used to put it at the edge of their home so that the water would run off the tin roof and they would have rainwater to, to wash with. So it's a wash tub right there. We called it a foot tub because it's about a foot high, but it's a wash tub. So they brought this wash tub in and put it on the table and it was full of sand. And they, they had a pallet and they, they put a piece of plywood down and they dumped all of that out, but it wasn't sand. It was boulders and rocks and gravel and sand. And then they challenged, can you come and put this back in the foot tub and make it even? Well, there was only one way to do that. And how was that? Somebody knows. You gotta put the big stuff in if first. you don't put the big stuff in first, it's impossible to get it back in. Okay. It's literally impossible. So you look at that as, as, as it relates to time management. You have to put your projects in first. If you don't put your projects in first, you can never get the full amount of time that you, that you need. And time is limited. You're only gonna live for so long. You wanna get as much done. So you always do your projects first. When you're doing your planning, then the projects have tasks. Then you prioritize the tasks and you only take the, the highest priority and you put them on things that you're gonna look at now because you can't do the whole project today. You know, it takes time, but you can delegate it all today and that's easy. So this is from 2008, so you can see I've been doing this for a while and it's some of the major projects. Now, when I was studying about this, I learned that Bill Gates, who's Bill Gates? That's right. He's pretty successful. We got lots of money. One time he was the richest person in the world. At, at, at the time I was studying that, he had 1,500 projects that he was working on at one time. That's a lot. And then I thought, I wonder how many I had. I had 600 at that time. Well, guess what? You can't do 600 projects, but you can get 600 projects rolling if you know what you're doing. So you, you have your projects. The next thing is your daily list. And you're going to look at this every single day because things change. And at the top of my daily list, if you ever see it, well, you're going to see it right now. Here we go. <laughs> How many years later is this? This is 2008, so it's 12, 13 years later. I still have my list of most important projects at the top of my daily list. So I, I want to concentrate on these things here. So your daily list is gonna have everything you're gonna to do today, all your appointments, they're gonna show up on there, all of the things that showed up on your calendar that needed to be done today, um, things, um, things that really need to be done as far as projects go, uh, meetings with employees, list, and, and other things. So you, your daily list changes every day and you're going to look at that every day. Now, I have things color-coded so that if I finish this, I don't check it as completed. I just move it because it's green. I move it to the next day because it's gonna be done again the same. The same thing has to be done again every day, so I just move it from one day to the next if it's that color. Um, if it's something that I'm just gonna do one time, put the jacket in the car. I throw my jacket in the car, check it off, and save it. But I've been saving these for 25 years. I can tell you exactly what I did this day because there's, there's, a, there's a list that had completed items that I saved that I can go back to October the 9th on the Thursday, 2008, and I can tell you everything I did, whoever I met with, whatever. I don't know that that helps anything, but if anybody ever comes and say, what did you do this day? I'm gonna shock them and say, I can tell you what I did, <laughs> exactly what I did. All right, the next thing is your team list, and this is called delegation, and this is where most of your time is gonna be saved. It, it, once you start thinking about it, my sweet secretary's been with me 21 years, and I can remember back working at uh, Service Master when I first hired her, every Tuesday was bill paying day. 
I paid all of the bills on Tuesday, and it took most of Tuesday. You know, I looked at them. I decided whether we really owed it or not. You know, I wrote the checks. I signed the checks. And the entire day of Tuesday was paying bills. And so in one of the time management courses, it said, you know, monitor the things that you do and see what you can give to someone else. And so one Tuesday, I said, Jennifer, come over here. I want to show you how to pay the bills. And I did. Now, guess how long it takes me to pay the bills? Leaving her initials, leaving her name. I, I, yeah, <laughs> probably 15 seconds. I mean, she brings them and I look at them. So I still sign the checks. But at one time, I had a stamp with my signature on it. And when we moved into our new office, I lost the stamp. Now I have to sign the check, so I'm wasting seconds. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you that. So your team list, you may think you don't have a team, but you do. Put me on your team. I might be able to do something. I don't know. Put the other IMTs on you. Put Roger on your team. Put your wife, put your husband, put your cousin, put anybody on your team. Look, will realtors work for you? Yes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. What about uh, attorneys? Yeah. Yes. What about title companies? Mm -hmm. What about mortgage companies? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, in this business, everybody works for you, and they pretty much do it for free. And then when the closing happens, they get paid. And I never, I never even feel it. So one of the things, if you're not doing, that's really going to save you a world of time is you have to think, is it better that I do this? Or could I give this to someone else that can do it better, faster, and cheaper? And if so, you delegate it to them in priority order so that they're always working on the most important thing. Now, Karen's on my list. Karen's on my, right? I am. So Karen had every week, there's a list, a list. and it's prioritized. And it's only my list. That's right. It's anybody else's list. Right. And she probably works, I mean, hours and hours of stuff just working with Sue. I mean, <laughs> it takes hours to work with our editor and and. and Formatter, she's, she's lucky to have him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> take care of her. But when I give that to her, how long does that take? I spend 10, 15 minutes deciding what she's going to do, and then I give it to her, and then she spends hours. So now, if you multiply that times, I have about 20 people on my list. If you multiply those hours by 20, how much am I getting done? A lot. That's called industry, and that's why at the end of the year I have to pay taxes on all that money. But that's not a, that's really a good problem to have. I promise you it really is. Well, it doesn't seem like it at tax time. <laughs> all right, so there's a delegation list. Now, what can you see? This is Jennifer's list. She's my secretary. It's Jennifer's list. It says, Jennifer, look at this. What does that say? J1. That means that all of those things she got to do, and the one means it's the most important thing she has to do. And then I, I even prioritize the ones so that this is the most important over this. So that at any given time, Jennifer is working on the most important thing. When she finishes, the next most important thing pops up and she does that. And at the end of the week, she gives me her list, and it's always pretty much totally completed. Everything's checked off. Now, if I had had to do that list that I gave her, I couldn't have done it in a month. I probably couldn't have done it in three months because she's better at it than me. She's done it more than me. She's faster, and, she, and many of the things she does at this point, I don't even know what she's doing because years ago, she figured out how to do it better and take care of it in a more efficient way. References, you're going to get all kinds of things during the day where you get put on a committee, you get a password, you have usernames and codes, contracts, quotes, addresses, phone numbers, and it goes on and on and on and on. And this is all stuff that you think, well, at some point in the future, I may need this. And you just put an R by it, and it goes in reference, and then you can do search. So, um, Than Merrill, you know who's Than Merrill? Investor 
TV celebrity, yeah, football player. Football player, right. Very famous person. I can go to my reference list, type in Than Merrill, and I've got his cell phone. Because years and years and years ago, he spoke at my group, and we became friends. Years ago. Probably 15 years ago. But I can still call him on the cell phone, and we're, we're still friends. That reference list, I don't know how far back it goes, it's probably 30 years where I can tell you people that I needed to remember and, and addresses and phone numbers and whatever. And luckily, the way Microsoft, Microsoft set up, it never ends. You can just continue to add uh, as long as you want to. And you can still hit search and it'll find anything in that file. And so that's what a reference list looks like. It's not prioritized, it doesn't need to be. It just needs to be there so you can search for it. Be sure to put the right keywords so you can find it. And then calendars. I have lots of different calendars. Everything I do won't fit on one calendar. So I have a number of, of calendars. Things to do on a specific day. In other words, that's the calendar that's right laying in front of me uh, on my desk. Anniversaries and birthdays, and that pops up on the calendar on my phone. Uh, trips and other sensitive projects. Now, at the beginning of the year, Norma and I sat down and we say, where do you want to go? You know, she'll say, well, let's go to, uh, I think next year we're going to see the whales. Well, that's in Los Cabos. And then we're going to have another one of these. So we plan the year out, and about every four to six weeks, we're going to go somewhere. So that, that makes that easy. Anniversaries, birthdays, trips, monthly planned items, if we want to do other things, go to weddings. And yearly and long-range plans, we, we have a, a 5, 10, 15-year plan. Uh, Zig Ziglar tells this wonderful thing about uh, China, about uh, at the end of World War II, they were absolutely devastated. They had nothing. The only thing they had was people who knew how to plan. And they planned by decades, and they planned out hundreds of years. And everything they planned at the end of the decade, they reached it. So they, from the the, in the 50s, they were going to be here, and they were there. In the 60s, they were going to be here, they were there. In the 70s, 80s, 90s, and now they're, they're exceeding. And uh, it's kind of scary that, because you can read what they're planning, and it's not going to be good for us. We need to have someone that can plan, but you can do your own plans. That's, that's the best that you can do. And then there's things that you can do that saves time. You need to have a time management system. You need to get help. Now, if you're not using an assistant, you're really, really messing up. Now, uh, Doug and Renee can tell you, when they first came with me, I said, you, you need to get help. Now, what's your assistant's name? Ashley. Okay, uh, what if I said, well, uh, how about just let me have Ashley and you have no one? Would you do that? Don't wanna do that. <laughs> I didn't think so. She would so. have a hard time saying that, I guarantee you. That's because if you do what I say, it's really going to work. It's going to make you a lot more money. Are you making more money because of her, or is she costing you money? No, we're making more money. If she does nothing but QuickBooks, I'm... That's right. And they'll do <laughs> so much more. But you can multiply that. You, you need to have a Jennifer or an Ashley. You really do. Because she, she, she so takes exactly all. Exactly true. What what Dennis said is that you have these women that are smart. They graduated high school. They got married right out of high school. They could have gone on to college. They could have, and they graduated at the top of their classes. They know everything about right. everything uh, technology. And I have to ask, you know, how do I do this? <laughs> and I thought that I knew a lot. Um, but yeah, and they're there and they, you don't have to pay them tons and they don't even have to be there but a couple of hours a day. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. sometimes every other day or every mm -hmm. yes. two days a week or whatever. So and they're the, leaps and bounds ahead on some of the stuff. Oh, absolutely. Google Calendar, like, how do you do that? Well, I don't do anything. You know, Nina does everything. Jennifer does everything. I mean, if you come to my office and like yesterday we had a call, I said, Karen, come over here and do this. I didn't know how to do it. I don't have to know how to do it. I have to have Karen. 
I have to have Nina. And, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you learn to use VAs, then you can tremendously expand. And they're so inexpensive. And you only use them for what you need. And they can spit out an Excel spreadsheet in like two minutes that I would spend a week and I would do it wrong. And have to, yeah. I would get so frustrated. And I finally just said, do, do, you know, do you know how to do Excel? Like, this is my problem I'm having. Can you teach me how to do this? And he said, what are, man, what are you doing? Let me watch. And he went in and just spit it out. And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, really? <laughs> Sorting is like, Sorting a certain way, like I sort by alphabetical order, I sort by the meeting they came to, I sort, I mean, sorting is so important. Yes, and, and, and with computers, using the computer to sort, it's instant. I mean, you just highlight it and hit sort, and pew, bam! It could have taken you a lot of time to move these things from here to here to here, put this person here, but you just prefix it, sort it, and bam, it's done. Okay, get an assistant. Make delegating a habit. Learn, uh, have the habit of asking yourself, how can I get this done? Who can do this better than me? Make that habit. It will change your life. It literally will change your life. And then you'll have time to do whatever you want to do. If we want to take a two or three or four week vacation, that's fine. Do I have to be here? No, he's here. You see, you, if you're good at this, there's always somebody else. And I set this up for you as, as IMTs so that if you need to be out, doesn't matter. One of the other IMTs can teach that lesson four. One of the other IMTs can come and do your program for you. Just like last night where uh, Tony did a program for another person. So it, it's a system and it really works. Use technology. Learn to say no. Now that's a really big one right there because people will ask you to do all kinds of things. Charities, churches, and that's, you know, if you want to help a charity, make that a priority. Put it on there and do it. Like Roger does a lot of work with um, Rotary, okay? That's fine. He fits that into his schedule. Or not. You have the option. It depends on what your goals are and what your priorities are. If someone calls you with a charity and you think, oh, that's a wonderful charity, that's really interesting, how does that weigh against my priorities? And if it comes down here, then you say, I'm sorry, have other commitments, and you're done. And that saves you a world of time instead of chasing all these wonderful things that you could be doing. You're helping more people by doing things right yourself and employing people and paying them well. You're, you're helping more than by chasing um, other things. Do preventative maintenance on your car, your home, and work. Look at, well, what's going to happen if this happens? You know, if I don't get my oil changed, if I don't change the filters, one day I may end up on the side of the road. You have to think ahead and do preventative maintenance. And then improve communications. The number one thing in the military in winning, uh, winning a battle, is communication. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, Tim's the expert because he was really high up. It's amazing. Uh, I was uh, very impressed when I found out his rank and how, impre how the people respected him. But in World War II, the problem, the biggest problem was communication. If we, if we would have been able to get the communications out, hundreds of thousands, millions of lives would, be, would have been saved because you'd know how to react to certain situations. Well, we have everything at our fingertips, so use it. Now, I'm not saying that you have to become a technical wizard because I'm proof you don't, but you employ people who are, who, who can do it better and faster and cheaper than you. Okay, so in summary, ask yourself what's the most important thing that needs to be accomplished and what am I doing about it today? Robert Schuller. 
Here's a suggested book. This is a boring book. <laughs> well, it really is. Yeah. Have you read it? Yeah. It's very boring, but the essence of the book is very good. It's when, when I was doing all this, I was going around to all these time management seminars and buying all the books and CDs. I listened to his CD and I, I couldn't believe it. I listened to it and I thought, this is absolutely amazing because it was exactly, not kind of, it was exactly what I was doing. I had just figured it out and he'd figured it out. There were two minor similarities, uh, minor discrepancies. One is he did a weekly review and the other one was I was using the sort key. So mine was better than his because I was sorting much quicker than he was. And his was better than mine because once a week he did a uh, weekly review. So I changed mine now, it's better than his. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's good. It reinforces everything I just said, which is it's great to get it from more than one source. And if you, if you look at who he works for, it's the Fortune 50, the top businesses in the, in the whole world, and the military works for the Pentagon. He teaches time management to our military. So I think that's pretty good credentials. And then next month using the A's. So we're going to talk about in detail uh, how to use our, how to find VAs. By the way, there's a manual on the training site on getting VAs. Have you seen that? It's an entire manual that you can download. It's, a, it's an ebook. <laughs>